and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen today, we've got a debut uh, from a constructor called Jeff Wahes. And it's called An Odd Serpent, for reasons that I will explain in a moment. It comes very, very highly recommended. And I'm assured, not by Mark, that it isn't too difficult. So we can trust the recommendation. And if you've been watching the channel and thinking, oh, the puzzles are sometimes a bit difficult, and you're not sure which puzzle to cut your teeth on in terms of Sudoku variants, then this one might be the one to try. Um, anyway, I'll get to the rules in a second. Uh, do remember to have a try of our Sudoku puzzle hunt, which is, was released about three days ago on our Patreon page. It's getting the most incredible speed, uh, feedback. So huge, huge amount of kudos to Stefan Bura and Akash Jain uh, for coming up with this quite incredible series of puzzles. Um, and it's called Tracking the Cryptid, as I've told you in previous videos. And I'm gonna read out a list of a few names. We had a few more correct solutions actually in the last 24 hours. So huge congrats to the following. Scott McKinley, Kelly V, Joe uh, Wei Chin Chang, Shui Wu, Julius Julie Smith, not Julia Smith, uh, Harrison Stein, Mark Wiseman, Ethan Strumvasa, uh, J.H. Harsh, Zach Tierman, Tim Dore, and Patrick Flynn. Well done, all of you. It, it's some achievement to finish those puzzles. To give you an idea, if you've not looked at it, it's about 10 pages, all of linked Sudokus. It, yeah, it's really good. Have a go. Um, now, what are the rules of Jeff's puzzle? Let me read them to you. They are intriguing. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Uh, and actually, look at the cages. They're all within boxes here, which I presume is why there's no nothing to say digits can't repeat within a cage, because obviously digits can't repeat within a cage if they're all in the same box of the Sudoku. Um, now, an odd snake has made its home in the grid. Uh, you must deduce the cells where the snake begins and ends. The snake has the following properties. The snake's body consists solely of odd digit cells. The snake visits all nine boxes. The snake does not touch itself orthogonally. Diagonals are fine. The snake does not orthogonally touch any odd digit cell that is not part of its body. Diagonals are fine. Good grief. Right, so somehow we're going to have to draw an odd snake in this grid that visits all of the boxes. That sounds intriguing. I do have a go. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see how we do. Now, at least today I can get cracking immediately because there are some cages here that I, I know are restricted. Those have got to be 7 and 9 to add up to 16. Um, an 11 cage in four cells has got to be one, two, three, and five. Uh, a 38 cage. Um, we know that if we add an entire box of a Sudoku up, it will contain all of the digits from one to nine. So it will add up to 45. That's what you get if you add those digits. So those three digits, therefore, must be be the balance between 38 and 45. These must add up to seven, and the only way to make three cells add up to seven with different digits is one, two, and four. Seven and nine by Sudoku, look, get locked into those cells of box seven. Ah, this is lovely. Okay, now let's have a look at the effect of this seven and nine on box eight, because where does the nine go? Well, I can tell you the 9 cannot go in the 17 cage because that will break it. Um, you can't put any digit higher than a 7 in a 5-cell 17 cage. I mean, the reason the 9 will break it is it will mean that the 4 remaining squares have got to add up to 8. Now, the minimum you can make 4 squares add up to is 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is 10. So the 9 must go here. Whoops, no. Wah, what did I do there? I want to just put a 9 in there. And in fact, the 7 is shunted into the 17 cage, so that must now be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7, if I could type. Those squares are 5, 6, and 8 to complete the box. These squares to complete this box are 4, 6, and 8. Ah, well, we can get that one then, presumably. That can't be 6 or 8, so that is 4. Um... So those squares along there are 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3 affect the 10 cage now. 
So the 10 cage can't any longer be 1, 9, 2, 8, or 3, 7. That's got to be 4, 6. That fixes the 6 over here. It gives us an 8. And so far, so good. This is lovely. Um, it's not too challenging, but it's, it's elegant. So that's 9 there by Sudoku. These squares, they are 5, 7, and 8 to complete that box. So 7 can be... 7, not 8, 7 can be removed from those cells. 5 can be removed from these cells. Uh, 4 can be removed from those cells. So we end up with a quintuple there, which I don't think we can... I don't think we know enough about the top half of the grid to disambiguate this much further. But it's a nice start. Now, one, two, four here, looking at this square. Well, that's going to be a three. So maybe, can we do something with the 18 cage, therefore? So this, these three squares, the options are five, six, seven, and eight. Hmm. So I can see, for example, this can't be a 7-8 pair, because if it was, these two squares would have to be a 1 and a 2, and that would break this cell. But unfortunately, that's not going to be... Knowing this is not 7 and 8 is not a huge restriction. There's still lots of things it could be. Uh, 30 cage. And 30 cage here, that means those three squares add up to 15 to make 45. That's useless. Um, 27. A 27 cage in four cells must contain a 9. And the way to work that out is to try and make 27 without using 9. 8, 7, 6 and 5 only add up to 26. So there is a, there is a 9 in here and it's in one of those three positions. So let's put that in in case that helps. And the balance of this column is 1, 2, 3, and 5. So we'll put that in as well. Starting to grind to a halt with the Sudoku. So we may have to think about the snake in a moment. Um, that moment might be right now. <laughs> Let me just think for a second. So 11 in 3 cells with... <laughs> Well, you could never put a 9 in a 3-cell 11 cage anyway. So, right, we're going to have to look for snake. So is this... We've got to put an odd-numbered snake together. So perhaps we need to start shading, do we? So that's interesting. Right, ah, okay, yeah, we're going to start to shade because 4, 6, and 8, Knowledge Bomb from Cracking the Cryptic, they are even digits. 7 and 9 are odd digits. Right, and... Right, and the, the thing that intrigues me about this sort of wall of evens is that we're told in the instructions that the snake visits every box of the Sudoku. So when the snake visits box 7, it will have to be... Both of those cells must be snake cells because we, we know every cell... Um, or to put it a different way, if this was a snake cell, we couldn't say this one wasn't because it's orthogonally adjacent to another odd digit. So both of these are snake. Ah, now, hang on, hang on. That means both of those can't be snake. Because if both of these are snake as well, the snake would definitely touch itself however it moves. So one of these squares... Ah, I see. One of these squares has to be even... And therefore it has to be a 2, because in the 11 cage, the only even digit is the 2. So we get a 2 in one of those. There's no 2 down here. Which means, yeah, which means these are odd. And because only one of these is even, the other is odd, the snake will get down to there. So that one of these squares is the head or tail of the snake. So the snake's either going to do this, or it's going to do that. That's very cool. Um, now, can we do... Can we learn anything more about... So does that affect the 27 cage somehow? 
that can't be that square can't be a one or a two actually Ooh, that's got to be odd hang on a minute that's got to be odd it can't be a one or a two by the way because if you put a one or a two in a four cell 27 cage you can't get to 27 because seven eight and nine only add up to 24. now though if this was three this would be seven eight nine if this was five this would add up to 22 without using the five so it'd be six seven nine so there's always hang on wasn't there always a seven in both those options seven eight nine here if this is three six seven yes there's always a seven in there and the other digit is either six or eight ah Oh, that's really clever. It's really clever. So, so now we know that there's exactly one even digit in this 27 cage. And we, we know if we think about it, it's not possible that both of these are odd. Because if both of these are odd, these two odd digits will connect with those two odd digits and the snake will touch itself again. Don't let your snake touch itself. How many times do I have to tell you? Um, so one of these is even, which means that square must be odd. And therefore it is a seven or a nine. And now, now that can't, yeah, this can't be odd or the snake's gonna branch because the snake will go here and then it has to go in both directions. So this is even, this is very clever, this puzzle, that must be odd. Now, if this is, if this is even, it, we know it's six or eight. We know this is a seven or a nine. Let's get rid of the corner pencil marks to try and tidy that up. So this, so now we know where the two goes because look, the snake, the snake has got to wander down this way. So this square, this square is the two. Don't get that wrong. Two is most certainly even. So this one is odd. This is even. This has got to come out to meet its friends. So that's another odd digit. This is a one, three or a five because it can't be a seven or a nine. This square now must be even, otherwise the snake branches. So far, this is absolutely stunning. It's not it's not being it's not being difficult yet, but it is it's just a lot of fun. Um now now what does the snake then do does it come to this square or does it go upwards somehow um well ah one of those two squares must be ah here we go these two squares are an odd and an even square because they can't both be even because that would put five evens in the column and they can't both be odd because that would put six odds in the box. So this is an odd and an even, which means that's even, which pushes this one over. Lovely, that finishes it. So now we can do some tidying up. This square is even. So it's two, ah, so it's, no, so it just is a two because it sees four, six, and eight. Okay, that's even. So these are four, six, and eight. Four must be in one of those squares. That's not four there. Oh, ooh, hang on, that's a one. That is a one, because it can't be a two or a four. Let's get rid of the ones from those squares. We get a two, four pair. Now we can do some shading again. So this one is odd. The blues are the evens. This now look, the snake is now going so it's got to come out here and therefore that square must be even so that the snake doesn't touch itself. Oh, good grief. This is what the 30 cage, this is what the 30 cage is here for. These three squares have got to add up to 15. Now we've got an even and an odd. So if we had another odd number, these three squares would add up to an even number. We'd have two odds, which add to an even, and another even. That's not possible. 
these have to add up to an odd number so they must be two evens and an odd so that must be a second even square and that forces the snake I love this puzzle already this is just really excellent um, now hang on so this this is odd so it can't be six or that's just a five I think which means we get rid of five from those squares nine actually look nines are definite nines and threes are most certainly odd I've got to be careful as well actually as I've just been merrily assuming every cell every odd cell is a snake but you know it's you can see this nine is going to have to be snake because this next move in fact the next move has to be down because these two are even so that one's going to be that means that one's even right we can do some tidying up again now so this square has got to be a one or a three that's a one three pair here so let's get rid of that this square has got to be that's even and it can only be a two the reason I'm, poor, I'm pausing is I'm just so surprised. It just does not occur to me that that was going to be a fill-in digit. That makes that one a four. These two squares, therefore, so that's definitely even. These are definitely odd. These two squares are one, three, and seven, I think, because the five and the nine have gone. So now the snake, the snake is continuing. It's continuing it to here. Four and six are even. So the snake goes up. This has to be an odd. Ah, no, we, we can't quite do that. It's a five or a seven. But that means this square must now be even. Otherwise, the snake's touching itself. The snake has to get out. So that square, that square's got to be odd and therefore cannot be a two. So we go one, two here. This square is an even, so that's an eight. This square is, ah, okay, that square's odd and that square's even. So, the, so this square is the first odd square we found that's not part of the snake, I think. I think that's what this is. I think that's what that's telling us. Five, seven, one, three. So let me just have a look at this. So the snakes come round here. This is not orthogonally adjacent to that. It can touch diagonally. That is fine. So it, let's continue with our snake. Make our snake grow. Um, one's got to go down there. Two's got to go there. Okay. Now. What do we do next? We're going to have to... I don't know what we do next. Perhaps... I really don't know what we have to do now. How do we determine how this now moves? I have not got a clue. I don't want to just guess. That's what I really do not want to do. Oh, I was about to say we've got to make sure that the snake gets into the 30 cage somewhere in order that it visits box 5 but it's actually the snake has already visited box 5 7, 9 so this has got to be 1, 3 or 5 so the snake has already visited box 5 so we don't actually care if it comes in here or not that can't be a two. So the, all of ah, all of those three squares are odd. Does that matter? Yeah. The, okay. So the snake has to come in to box one, and when it does come into box one, it's not going to come from here, because that will cause the snake to branch. So that square must be even. So it comes in through one of these. Oh, but it could then reverse out because we don't know where the head or the tail is. Oh. Can we do, can we, do we know anything about the 11 cage? Oh, we, we can do some Sudoku. Let's do some Sudoku. That might help me. Um, 
The 11 cage now can't contain an 8 because it can't contain a 2. So the 8, ah, so the 8 must go here. And that's nice because if the 8's here, the 8 must go there in box that box. That gives us a 6 and a 4. The 6. Does that do anything for me? I don't know. So let me think about this. The 11 cage must have one odd digit in it. Ah, and it can't have three odd digits in it because there's already been three odd digits in the box and there are only five odd digits. So this has one odd digit in it and two even digits. So it's it's one, four and six then. OK, I will take that. That's not it's not a daft deduction. That means that one of these squares exactly is odd. And that will therefore, ah, if one of these is odd, this box contains the head or the tail of the snake. Because these three squares are going to, one of these squares is going to connect to whichever one of these is odd. And then it might even go into the one as well. But definitely the, the snake is going to do that or that. It's, what it's not going to do is that because the snake is branching. So that square has got to be even. Okay, we've got two evens in this row now. So one of these is odd, and this, that means one of these is odd and one of these is even, which gives us another digit, I think, actually, because if one of these is odd and one of these is even, in order, because we have to get into box one, and we can't come out of box one like that, because that will mean whichever one of these is odd is sort of a stranded head or tail of the snake, that means we've completed the evens in this column. One, two, three, and whichever one of these is blue. So this square is odd. And that is absolutely useless. Um, but it was quite interesting. So. Wow. OK, so we're going to have to think again. 8. 8 in box 6 is in one of those two cells. Eight in box six is in one of these two cells. Now does that what I'm wondering is if that limits the six because for example the six cannot be in these two squares. Because if it is, the snake will branch there. That's not possible. So the six is not in these two cells. The six can't be here, because if the six is here, the snake will be uh, has entered a cul-de-sac, because whichever one of these is the eight will pen it in. So the six, the six is in one of those two cells, which means those two cells have now turned orange. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, Hang on. Hang on. So if this snake hits this cell, it will have to continue along here and then its next move is there. And we know that this is where the head or the tail of the snake ends. And that breaks it because it never visits box three of the puzzle in the puzzle, which is not allowed. It's got to visit box three. So this square if one of these squares is even and one of these is snake, this square cannot be the snake square because then that square will be the snake square and the snake will go ch -ch 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 end and never go in here. So this square is even and therefore it's a six. That is absolutely lovely. And now look, how does this snake escape? It's got to go in there. This is a sen This is just a brilliant, brilliant puzzle. That's that's it. There I've said it. Now. That six is giving me the six and the four at the bottom, of course. There's a two in one of those. 
Okay, so now what? Um, right, so those two squares, one of them is snake, one of them is not snake. Can we do something with Sudoku here again? There's got to be a four in one of those cells. Nine, I don't think we know about. Sixes are definitely over here. See, now it's interesting in that I think we can now touch this square. So if it comes that way, and then does that. That that does meet the, the rules of the puzzle because this box has been visited in that square and this box has been visited in these squares. So, so now we've got to figure out exactly what this is doing next. Um, very unsure as to how to that can't be a four. Okay, the four is definitely in one of those two cells. Maybe I can use the 18 cage somehow, can I? Is that the idea? The answer is I don't know, perhaps I can. The minimum value of those two squares is 11. So the maximum value of these two squares is seven. Ah, so if the two is not in the 18 cage, if the two was here, these two squares then would have a minimum value of three and five, which is eight, which is too high. So the two is not there. So there's definitely, there's definitely a two in one of those squares. And that means this square, oh, that's gorgeous. If, there's a, if the 2 is here, that's the fourth even digit, so this is odd. And now one of these two squares is even, one of them is odd, and the same is true of these two. Well, we now know that one has got to be even, because otherwise the snake has branched, so that becomes snake. And we know that this is not a head, ah, we, it might not be, it doesn't have to be a head or tail of the snake, of course. So this is absolutely possible that this, this square is odd. But if that's odd, then we have to go there next. Ah! <laughs> um, so here we've got two evens and one odd. No, we can use the 18's parity, of course. This is an odd and an even number. So it adds up to an odd number. So these two squares have to sum to an odd number. So they are an odd and an even number. Which means this square has to be the fourth even digit in the box. Which means that has to be snake. We can't go here because the snake will then have a tail here and it will never get to over here so that's going to go there this becomes here that goes here and we're off and running again that comes out now we must never touch this string of cells otherwise this will become the head or the tail so we can fill that one in as even um, okay so that means that square is definitely a two that's not a two. This is not a two. The one we don't know about, the four must go there though, because it can't go in an odd square. Those two squares must be the six, eight pair. Um, so let's put those in. This is not six or eight anymore. 
So presumably we can almost start getting a handle on this 18 cage and what that looks like. Don't know if we need to do that right now, but let me let me just see if I can work out. So now we know this square is definitely even because otherwise this won't be a head or a tail and it needs to be. So that square turns out to be even. That gives us four even digits in column four. That's odd. That's odd. So, th oh, this is gorgeous. So now we've entered box one like that. So this square must be odd and this square must be even. Which means this is not a two or an eight. Which means this is a two. And this is an eight, which means that's a six. And now maybe... So now we get an 8 there. We get 8 here. This can't be a 5 because then you'd have to repeat 5. This is a 7. This is a 3. The 7 and the 5 get finished down here. If I could type. Uh, there must be a 7 in one of those two squares. This 7 fixes the 7 and the 9 in box 1. There must be a 7 exactly there by Sudoku. And therefore, that's an orange 7. That's a 7 by Sudoku because that one can't be now. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've just got this final... Ah, well, here it is. We can't make that orange because then it will branch. How can this be this guy's debut? I mean, this is just superb. Um, so now we, we don't quite know what's happening up here. We don't quite know what's happening in here, but we know what the snake approximately looks like now. The snake, it doesn't involve these cells or this one or this one, but it involves everything else orange that I've drawn. Um, We've got five oranges in there, so the, both of those are even. That finishes off the middle box. Now, presumably, we can... We ought to be able to treat this almost as two different puzzles now and just finish off the even digits and then think about the odd digits after that. You can see that can't be a six. That can't be a four. These, oh, hang on, those two are even, so this is a 6-8 pair, which means that one is a 1. And that puts 4 and 6 into those two squares. Now this square is therefore odd and is not part of the snake. Those two are even, also not part of the snake. This is, becomes a 3 or a 5. Slightly surprising that's not finished, but look, along here we need to put a 5 in the row. Let's put that in. 3, 5, this is a 1, 9 pair. We know where the 1 goes, so we can do all of those. This now has to be a 5, 7 pair. Don't know if we know the order yet. I'll just put it in and we can worry about it in a second. That's most certainly not 8. These are 3 and 9. Don't know what that looks like yet. One has to be in one of those cells. Oh, now hang on. These had to add up to 15, didn't they? So that might be resolvable. I'm not sure. I'll have a think about that in a second. This is a 796 now. So this one, we can work out the value of that. These add to 22, so this has got to be a 5. Whoops, well, highlighted lots of the grid there, didn't mean to. That 5 fixes the 5 and the 3 up there. That fixes the 3 and the 1. This 5 fixes the 5 and the 7. That fixes the 7 and the 9. The 9 and the 7. This square here has got to be a 5. We get left with a, with one three pairs, which look like they're going to have to be resolved somewhere up there, I think. That one can't be nine. That means this square is a five by Sudoku. One, 
3, 7 and 9. The only place 7 can go is here. This becomes 3 or 9. Okay, that's all good. We've got a 6, 8 pair here. So this becomes a 2, 4 pair. Uh, you can see, look, it's almost looking like a deadly pattern except for this 30 cage. I think that's going to be very important. If this is, ah, oh, this can't be 1. If that's a 2 or a 4 and these have to add to 15. So the 1 shifts over to this side of the grid. <laughs> That's not one anymore. Let's get rid of the one there. So this has to be three or nine. It can't be nine. So that's a three. That's a surprise. So this can't be two. It has to be four. This is an eight. The three fixes the three and the one. That fixes the three and the one at the bottom. That fixes the two. The two and the four. That should be a six. 3 and the 9 get finished. That's a 9 now. That finishes the 3, 1 and 9 at the top. Uh, the 2 and the 4 get finished. The 6 and the 8 get finished. That 6 and that 8 get finished. And there we have it. I think that is the solution. I won't click check yet because I want to highlight the snake and make sure that I'm not highlighting the other orange cell so that is the snake I think we have to draw the red and that is a brilliant puzzle that I loved that that was so much fun and the logic was was good without being brutal and as a feat of construction to make that solvable like that smoothly with the interaction of the snake rules and the sudoku rules it's stunning absolutely stunning I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, even half as much as I did do let me know in the comments. I do read them. And thanks for watching. Back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Oh, click check. Yeah, it looks good to me. It was right. It was right.